All right, so in this video, we're going to look at reusing some facilities that we've already defined. So there's no reason for us to go in and redefine functions that we've already written every single time we write a program. In program six, we actually wrote three additional functions in addition to the main function, get pos int, area of circle, and vol of sphere. So we'd like to be able to reuse those, much like what we do whenever we do these pound includes up here for IO stream, string, and CMath. See, these are actually in doing an inclusion or pulling in header files for IO stream, string, and CMath. And a header file is just simply a file that contains some sort of interface information. Oftentimes, it'll be function declarations like what we have here, or maybe even constants. It can also include additional information besides that. But in our case, we'll just think about the function declarations and maybe the constants uh, being in, the, in these header files. And we can actually go and create our own header file so that we can reuse code that we've already written. So let's go ahead and start separating out some of this code that we'd like to be able to reuse in other, uh, other places. Maybe this, this program 6 is a, is a perfect example. We'll just separate out the functions we might like to use and then go about um, pulling in the necessary information as we need it. So let's go ahead and create a brand new source file. So I'm going to go here to the Project Explorer, right click on Program 6, go to New, and select Source File. And then we'll just call this My Math Functions uh, .cpp and click on Finish. So we get a brand new source file here. And if we were wanting to write some sort of library that had math facilities in it, then this is really the way we would start doing it as opposed to placing everything here in our program 6 file like we did. But, you know, we had to start somewhere and we just plopped everything in there on our initial go through. But we're trying to refine things as we learn more about um, some proper, I guess, methods in programming. So let's go ahead and uh, extract some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy some of this. Stood over here. Actually, I'm going to delete out uh, this stuff here. And then I'm going to go down here and cut out all of the function definitions. So we've got the uh, function declarations. We also have the constant pi, and we also have the pound includes in the using namespace. And now I'm pasting in the actual function definitions. So we have all this stuff extracted out into a separate file called mymathfunctions.cpp. But this is a separate thing. It doesn't have a main, main function, so there's no way to actually go in and, and run mymathfunctions.cpp as an actual C++ program because we know that in order for something to be a C++ program, it has to have a main function. So these two files are sitting independently of one another, and there's really nothing to... Uh, allow us to make use of these facilities here in my mymathfunctions.cpp. But what we can do is actually create an interface type file called a header file where we can get maybe the function declarations, the constants, and some other information in it, and then we can make use or include that particular file in this program 6.cpp. So let's go ahead and extract out uh, some of this information into a header file. So how do we go about creating our own header file? So I'm going to go over here to Program 6 uh, Project Folder, right-click on it, go to New, and then go to Header File. So it's easy as that. And the normal convention is, is we will name the header file the same thing is, as the uh, source file that contains the actual definitions. So we'll just call it uh, My Math Functions. And instead of .cpp, it's going to be .h, since uh, h is the uh, default convention, naming convention for the extensions of header files. And we'll leave the template as just the default C++ header template, and click on Finish. So here, whenever we create this, since we use that template, it actually supplied some things for us. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore these comments up top, and it just simply supplied the, the name and the date and, and my name. But let's pay attention to what we have here. We have these pound if in def, and this stands for if not defined. And then it has this thing here, which is just some particular symbol. In this case, it's called my math functions underscore h underscore. And that was just simply built off of the name of this file, this header file here. So it says if 
not define this, then define that symbol. And then it has indif here. And all this here is what we call a, a pound include guard. And what it does is it ensures that we're not going to include the same declarations multiple times because we may be pulling in lots of different header files to our program six. And it may be the case that other header files include this stuff already and we don't want to include it twice. So this is to, re, um, to prevent us doing multiple includes of the same stuff. So what we're going to do is just simply extract out some information over here. So we'll just cut, uh, what did I cut? I uh, cut the constant and I also cut the uh, actual declarations. And I'm going to put that over here after the pound if not defined and pound define. Okay, so our math, our my math functions dot h file is basically complete at this point in time. There may be one little thing that we haven't done yet, but I think I'm going to let the uh, compiler actually tell us what the problem is there, and we'll come back and talk about that. There's very little going on here in this particular header file. All we have is just the inclusion of our constant and our function declarations. So having this information here will allow us to include this mymathfunctions.h file in program 6.cpp and then we can make use of the definitions that are over here because we have the proper interface. This, this header file is providing us with an interface to the definitions that were defined over here in the math, mymathfunctions.cpp file. All right, so that's pretty much it for mymathfunctions.h. Maybe one little thing that uh, I'm going to let the compiler catch. And I'm going to come back over here to the uh, mymathfunctions.cpp and add in the pound include for um, my math, my math functions. So my math functions dot h. And you'll notice here the way we do pound includes for our own header files is a little bit different from the, the pound includes for the uh, C++ standard library header files. They get the angle brackets and then for our header files they get the double quotes. And I won't say any more about that. There, there is more that could be said, but for right now just assume that uh, the C++ standard header files get the angle brackets and your header files get the double quotes. All right, so that's pretty much it for mymath.cpp. The reason why we have to do this inclusion here, uh, even though we have, whenever you provide a definition for a particular function, it also includes a declaration, but we don't have our constant pi, so we can actually get that pulled in here from the header file. Okay, so we have that, and then over here in program 6, what do we need to do? We also need to do a pound include here as well. So we need to do a pound include and then my math functions uh, dot h. Okay, so it's the same thing. And actually we can get rid of uh, C math and string. We don't need to do pound includes for those uh, since it's already being pulled in through uh, my math functions dot h. Um, or we're not making use of them. I should yeah, clarify that because uh, my math my math functions dot h doesn't actually include those, but we're not making use of um, the string or the math, C math class anywhere in main here. We do make use of those over here uh, in our uh, mymathfunctions.cpp, but not in program six. So we can get rid of those particular pound includes. All right, so let's go ahead and save all these. So in the, instead of clicking on our normal save, we can click on the save all, which is the icon right next to it. it looks like several floppy disks on top of one another. So that'll actually save all three of these files uh, virtually simultaneously. So you notice that every single one of them has a little star there indicating that we've modified it since we last saved it. So we'll just go ahead and click on uh, save all. So it saves all those files. And now we'll try building. So that's going to be compiling and trying to link. And we'll see what we get. And we do notice that we get uh, a few errors here. So here in our header file, it says string was not declared in the scope. So over here, it's saying that we had a problem. Oh, we also forgot to do uh, something over here as well, maybe. So, um, well, I guess this error is actually related to uh, our problem here. So what happened here is we didn't do our normal directive for using namespace standards. So this is a directive here, and I haven't talked a whole lot about this, and I'm still not ready to talk about it just yet. We'll cover it in a later video. But it's not a good idea to, um, oops, get back to my project explorer here. It's not a good idea to actually do this using namespace standard directive 
inside of header files. And the reason why that's the case is it actually forces anyone that uses that header file to use that directive as well. And I'm going to discuss this in more detail in a later video. But for right now, we're going to come in here and do the fully qualified name for referring to string. So that would just be STD standard. So this is actually defining what we call a scope. And this is a scope operator. So that double uh, colon there is a scope operator. So we should be OK now. Let's go ahead and save this again. I'm not sure what happened to our files here. It's being OK. There they are. Uh, so go ahead and save all those, and then we'll try building again. And this time, we didn't have any problems building, so we were able to build and link. And if you want to test out our program, we can go ahead and run it again. And it should run the same way. So enter a positive integer for the radius of a circle, sphere, 5. And it spits out the area of the circle has a radius of five, that has a radius of 5, is 78.5397. And volume, it does the same thing that we saw before. So nothing different there. The only thing now is we've actually separated out these functions here into a separate file. And we have this header file that provides us with an interface for these function definitions. And this is really how you should start thinking about composing programs is, you know, we can separate out a lot of the function definitions into something and then make use of it in a particular program. So this really cleans up our... Um, our program 6 file, we only have this main function in here, and it's just simply recalling other functions that we've actually separated out here in this mymathfunctions.cpp. My All right, so that is it for this particular video. Uh, as I said before, in the upcoming videos, we'll probably look at discussing uh, namespaces in a little bit more detail and, and what they mean.